Hey everybody, it's Amon here. Welcome back to one of my other fights. This is going to be about Dr. Victor, if I'm saying his name right from Ben 10, the Frankenstein-like villain, but more cyborg. Financial words of the Wikipedia about him, so that's just the Ben 10 call roster. And this is going to be Dr. Victor. Well, you guys already see the title, but obviously it's going to be Dr. Victor versus my boy Doomfist. Now this fight, I did minimum lots of research about Doomfist and Dr. Victor. Can't wait to get into it, you know, and I hope you guys will enjoy it. Well, first, we're going to go and start with my boy Doomfist because I know a lot more about him. Well, Doomfist's real name is a Akande Ukundimu, named after an African god, what I'm saying, power and conflict in a way. The basically displays as a person or thing that comes up from something that brings both them trauma, but at the same time gives them the power to do different things. And he took a lot of this to heart and the Omni Crisis and Overwatch and after losing his arm and since he loved participating in battles pretty much as martial arts, wrestling, to boxing and multiple different key forms of African martial arts. When he lost his arm, it pretty much ruined his life in his own words, and he pretty much didn't have a calling. He did have a cybernetic arm, and he was pretty much a co-founder of a big company that his parents owned, but that wasn't really his thing. But he did use his knowledge of the company and his intelligence and findings to make something out of it. He later on joined with Talon, becoming a mercenary and great assassin in a way, and became one of the top agents among Talon. And mixed with his cybernetics and all his enhanced body equipment, pretty much, and fluctuating his body, pretty much he became a basically a warpath god in a way. But he isn't actually a god, but what I'm trying to say is that he became the best of the best when it came to Talon. When it comes to other things involving the character, he became very surreal about what he wanted to do. And his own words, conflict and war of the crucium to which we evolve. And he is on a war path to do this. When it came down to him becoming who he was, he took out his master, Umgandi, the second Doomfist. That's he's the third Doomfist. He's Doomfist's successor. He took the gauntlet and made it his own. And put some more inferior equipment into it and got some upgrades. Now, he's not full cyborg. He does have a lot of attachment to cybernetics and his body is in a film body structure of cybernetics and on the other hand more this advanced human biology in a way a lot of upgrading and sorry it was a commercial on my phone my bad but at the same time he's a lot more superhuman in a way but he does have superpowers from the doomfist gauntlet and what he can do and just from the cybernetics that he has the cybernetics allow him to basically do a lot of his shit without needing oxygen when he jumps super high in the air and does what he does He's very durable half his body is bulletproof He can take a lot of damage He gets a lot more powerful with this adrenaline rush from the cybernetics What the cybernetics allows him to have more imperial control over the doomfist gauntlet He can survive many winter and cold areas because of it So it kind of explains why he's able to be perfectly fine in some scenarios but most other things that involve like serial elements and things along that they mess with him a little bit and he's very damageable to chemicals because of a lot of the things in his body but just from the strength and the will of doomfist it doesn't affect him that much but with enough damage from those types of things he is very vulnerable but at the same time like i said the african spirit in him won't let it get down to him not even trying to make a black like stereotype that's kind of the way he is because you see from his design he has his african warrior vibe mixed with kind of like the more advanced materials of like kind of like a super villain but more like it's in pure to his body he has kind of like cybernetic bone claws that are more for attachments to the way he wants to look but those also help him in different battles he doesn't use them that much but those bones can actually extend and actually kind of claw into people it doesn't happen that much but i was kind of used when he was scraping against an area in the comic and pretty much those bone claws help him get out the way 
when it comes to the Doomfist Golem, the Doomfist Golem can radiate electricity as a biochemical electricity. And when it hits people, it staggers them, it shocks them, and the volts are kind of like, I think, in between the range of 30 to 20 volts. It depends on the power center, but at full power, it is 40 volts. And then, when it comes to the highest burn of percentage, it is at 60 volts. Now, using the science... And just from the normal scaling that I have, if Doomfist was hitting a person at full power, their entire body would arguably be destroyed from the inner system like a normal person. And it would cause them great ass harm. And it could possibly dysfunction their brain and everything inside of them. And just with a Doomfist going and having spiked metal bone claws, he basically is giving you a full punch of severe metal and the metal of the doofus gauntlet is ridiculously advanced so it's very different depending on how you see it because if you think about it normal metal confused into this doofus gauntlet is going to cause no more harm but this version of doofus are using the advancements and kind of like more of the superior version after he lost to winston broke out of prison where he is now Doomfist with the advancements no longer has this problem where his electricity is basically absorbing and reflecting on people because it kind of like did this thing where electricity that he was punching people with it basically severely staggered on people. But with this, now he doesn't have to worry about that. Now Doomfist is in here and he's not fucking around. Because with this fist now, it rapiates on people. But then at the same time, he takes his source of energy back in a way. So he doesn't have to worry about his fist not bringing out the full stamina of power. Because the last fist basically kind of had like a power limit. But it was mainly about how much force it brought because it had a lot of kinetic boundaries going into each blow. As the force that Doomfist brings with his punches, as you see in that one clip, it brings a lot of force, creating basically craters into walls and shit. And when it comes to other arsenals about Doomfist, the dude just brings a big gas halt to each foe he fights. He's not unstoppable though. But mixing with the Doomfist Gauntlet and the power that he brings, he's a great warrior in a sense. He does not fuck around. And when it gets comes to all of his arsenals, he's great. I'm only going to talk about a few other things involving the character. Um, he is basically the main leader of the Senate of Talon. He rose up for the ranks, not just for killing and all this, but getting partners, being a leader, and being a person that you don't fuck with. Because you know if you do, there's harm to come pretty much and when it comes down to why he does what he does it's more about how he lost what he had but at the same time losing his arm gave him more purpose gave him a drive to become something better to become doomfist doomfist in this scenario meaning a god among men in a way it is not see himself as a god and is not looking for greed he's not looking for worship he's not look for the men's of power what doomfist really wants is to pretty much make a civilization in his own way to prove a point that only the strong can survive and in his own words those who fall will be forgotten but those who rise up their names will be remembered forever so he has this very convoluted aspect and in some ways of what he says he's fucking right but at the same time he is a psychopath obviously because no matter what you believe in to his crusade He's killing innocent people. He would be a tyrant. This dude's a fucking war criminal in the actual lore. He's not a good person. So no one agrees with him. The only people that agree with him are some villains. There are some heroes that see his point. But they don't actually agree with him. So he's only exceeding on a neutral level. But most niggas would only fuck with him because of his money. You feel me? But I mean I'm not trying to start it all now and that. I'm just saying like in general. When I'm talking about the bone claws, I'm talking about the bone claws on the actual gauntlet, not those attachments. Those are not actually kind of real. They could be used to hurt people, obviously, but they're not like a actual advancement of component in his body. And some of the advancements just allow him to basically radiate to better heights, able to stagger on different positions. He's able to basically send a better speed. He's able to keep up with Tracer, arguably scaling him to the attack speed of a person moving faster arguably than time and transporting through a uh, speed of light 
but at the same time, he does not have that same amount of speed, but he's able to keep up with almost every character, arguably to that speed. He's able to fuck up Genji. He's able to run the hands of Winston, and he's arguably the most strongest character in this game, lore-wise. And even though Winston defeated him, Doomfist still arguably was a way better fighter than him and was fucking him up. And only lost from the comics and from what we see from the actual fight in the short, he was underestimating him, which doesn't mean that he didn't still lose. I'm just saying... Doomfist has said multiple times before and has been shown that if he really was fighting fully, that Winston wouldn't defeat him. But Winston still has a chance, and that is still a feat on Winston's behalf. But the fact that Doomfist was able to clobber each three character in his game, they're arguably the main strong point characters, proves a point that this dude, Doomfist, does not fuck around. The dude is on a warpath, and he does not care who's in his way, he will kill you. Now, the one power. And his arsenal that uh, is very interesting is the Meteor Strike. And he doesn't jump in space. I looked that up. I mean, I already knew he wouldn't do that because that wouldn't make sense. It would take him too long unless he has fucking flying powers. And that doesn't make sense either. He can jump super high and jump into the clouds, seeing some situations, and jump over big high spiritual heights. But he does not, I repeat, does not have flying powers, and he does not have the ability to breathe in space, and his advancements are allowing him to secure oxygen and not freeze to death when he actually gets to those heights. And most importantly, just the fall in general helps him, and also he doesn't burst his eardrums from the shockwave and possibly whole earthquake he causes with his punches, because... The maximum force and damage with his gauntlet can cause meteors in the fucking ground, pretty much erupting the ground, the forces, punching people so far, they go flying into walls, bursting through walls, arguably. He's busted through cars, busted entire block. I mean, when he took out Tracer and Genji, bro, he destroyed half of the entire main city. Like, not the entire city, but the main point of the city that I like is the entrance. So if he's able to do that, Doomfist is arguably small continent level, if anything, just with the force that he brings all together. And it's very cool to me, because I'm a little bit biased in this fight, because I love Doomfist. I'm going to talk about what I think about Doomfist in the fight later on, but I'm just saying, like, Doomfist is very powerful, and some people don't really see that. And his... Ear things near the problems in the kind of like spine segment that kind of latches his body to all his enhancements. Pretty much, it's kind of like this stable controlling scent of like, how do I say this? Like, it's kind of this a sensor or scent instinct thing that allows him to basically radiate movement. It allows him to basically focus a little bit better. And also, when he hits the ground, his ears don't burst open because... Arguably, if he hit the ground without any of that shit, the ground, first of all, would kill him without these attachments. He would be splat. And also, in general, he wouldn't be able to do shit. He can't hear. That's the thing. Um, other things that are interesting about him that could help him in this fight are his experience i wouldn't say he's more experienced than victor necessarily big combat from what i've seen dr victor from the series and for and on. i'm using dr victor from the classic series that's basically you know, frankenstein scent you feel me like not in uh like what is it the same in uh ultimate or alien force i'm pretty sure he's in both and technically the same series with a little bit of a spinoff but I'm also using the scenery and the center of, like, vibe that he gives uh, at the end of his appearance in the classic. Kind of when he gets blasted off from Ben or just left on the ship. You must say, I don't know what I'm talking about. It's been a while since I actually watched it. I rewatched it to see a little bit of his power and how he reacts to these stuff. But I don't really think that really takes more into the power control scenery because it's a scene showing off saying he didn't really show off big amounts of power and except of scaling but i'm not saying that he's a bitch or anything i'm just saying like it's not the most impressive thing you feel me but back on doomfist a meteor strike when he hits the ground like i said before it will be counts as a shock wave that radiates a big burst 
of electric energy or bioelectricity and when this happens he pretty much blows everybody back with a shockwave electricity and just this ground smash creates a whole fucking meteor in the ground lore wise and technically the natural game and basically fucks everybody up in general and it could kill most of every character in the game like it's almost as a one shot at its full capacity because some people actually don't know this meteor strike actually kind of has a power up thing and it depends on when you basically launch it at people but like the more damage and passing energy you give with Doomfist kind of with his power up and sustainability it's kind of like this brings in a more I guess electric punch but it's not just that the power behind all of that a high diving stability it's this this unreasonable and very this powerful punch like there's nothing else I can really say to it but it's also a punch that basically evaporates evaporates eva what I can't even talk today evaporates almost everything around him arguably because in that stain and punch and in that situation the entire like atmosphere people will be dispersed by breaking their eardrums killing them with a nuke sized punch and arguably destroying the entire platform that they would be on he would destroy almost everything in a capable scenery just with that punch and i'm not trying to wake off doomfist and say all that i'm not trying to say he's like fucking nuke level arguably but he is arguably able to destroy a continent i hella believe he's able to destroy a skyscraper i know there's one person and uh your favorite villains comment said that he couldn't but i back up that claim by saying if he's able to do this and you scale him and take in the scientific background that is spreading to his fictional science like and you see how much power that would arguably bring in our world and his capability this to the power that he brings the nigga is a continent buster i don't care not a big continent but at least small continent I would believe he's able to level skyscraper, not one punch and a few punches, like just a robot said. But I'm just saying, like in general, dog, Doomfist is a beast. Pretty much it, eviscerating and being a brutal warrior in every kind of sense of the way, tearing niggas apart, literally. So, that's Doomfist. Let me just drink some water. I was talking a lot. Ooh. I hope everybody's day is going good. Okay. So, we're done with doing fish, about to get on Dr. Victor. Now, I only know a little bit about Dr. Victor. I did my research to get more of his power level, in a way, or just the attack potency and all the separate background I need to scale him. Like, you get what I'm saying? Like, how... I need to reconcile his power compared to Doomfist, because that's how you should do it in a versus battle. Because you can't have someone like Superman, who is arguably a dimensional buster, to someone like Doomfist, who nigga is even a planet buster, you know? You can't do that. And before anybody says this, yes, I believe Superman can destroy a small dimension, a whole fucking universal small plane? No. And I mean a separable plane, meaning it's very diverse in its power, because that's how dimensions are. You can't assume a whole existence. That's besides the point. I'm going to go and get on Dr. Victor now. Dr. Victor is an alien crossed on him, if I'm saying that right, and pretty much has a Frankenstein cyborg vibe, and isn't like necessarily rush or anything, but kind of has that kind of feel to it. Is a very strict and very naggy type of villain, but at the same time is more inseparable to the mission no matter what. But it's very clumsy in situations. He is a part of the Halloween vibe season of Ben 10 with his henchmen representing the mummy of Egypt and the werewolf, but these two servants of his are Haromian and the mummy, because the mummy doesn't actually have a name, it's just the mummy. Pretty much, which is still a name, but like not an actual name because the name of the other werewolf is actually E. One Wolf, if I'm saying that right, because I didn't actually hear his name from Ben that much. But his full name is that, 
but Ben just called him like one wolf or something I don't know but I know that his name has a Native American vibe and pastoral vibe for the legends of the ancient times in America well, obviously, it wasn't, like, big Asian. But you get what I mean? The times of culture for natives. You feel me? But back on Dr. Victor. Dr. Victor, in his full form, has a more scary vibe, in the words of Ben. But at the same time, is very ugly and putulent. He is a Frankenstein lookalike as well. And he has great strength. The strength isn't on par with most of the other aliens. But his strength has been arguably comparable to Vilgax. But Vilgax before his big radiant form pretty much the form where the nigga looks like a transformer and when it comes to Dr. Vector's other arsenals he's able to connect to any bio center of electricity and any actual component of technology he can radiate to himself and make it his own but a technology has to be on the same level of bioelectricity or in other words, it has to be on the same chemical component as his. Since he's basically an electrical moderator, pretty much, if I'm saying that right. Not monitor, but moderator. Because moderator, Kramer from Wrong, is supposed to basically mean something that has a connection to a bunch of things. Like, he's the main capsule of technology in a way. He's able to reciprocate something that isn't his. So... He still technology, pretty much. His whole body is a fucking wire cord of shit. He connects to things, absorbs electricity, all the technology that impress, that not impress, impresses others, and he takes it to make himself more powerful because he needs to lift off of energy. That's what I was trying to say. I can't. <laughs> they this guy. I'm talking really fast. My bad. Okay. Hold up. All right. <sighs> Like I was saying, when he takes electricity, it doesn't just feed him electricity. It also combines all of that technology and basically forms his body into a more better structure. And it doesn't advance his strength and all that. It more advances his electrical abilities, his ability to control technology, able to see around things connecting to any type of technology and making it his servant and henchman and doing things along that also if you want to know more about his lower things he posted as a scientist and chemist for a lab starting on aliens and basically the outspurts of the galaxy in a way that was on his planet and he kind of want to do something like that on earth for a minute but it didn't really work out for him and he kind of was serving over ghostface the main villain of one of the arcs and season three correct me if i'm wrong and then between season two i don't exactly know i might rewatch it because i do have the full series of ben 10 ben 10 was dope i really should probably rewatch it but as besides the point um pretty much when it comes to how he acts from a more presentable side of things he's a very impressive opponent but he doesn't really bring the like skillful warrior vibe he's more a helping hand in situations and gives off the best versatility as a character that can act from far range but is also a heavy hitter in his own way and doesn't give up on what he's trying to do pretty much he doesn't succeed in a lot of situations, and when it comes to most fights, he needs a lot of things that absorb electricity to basically make his body the vasping power source for it. So, unless he's around a bunch of technology, this is not really going to work. I'm going to have this battle take place in Nubani, by the way. I just want to make that clear. So, he's not going to be the best in these situations. But Nubani is one of the most advanced countries in Africa in this world of Overwatch. So, a lot of futuristic tech, man. So, he'll be able to do something. But at the same time, 
it's arguable that he's able to advance himself to the same chronicle power source as VAT. Because he can't just take any technology. So I'm just going to make this clear. The only thing he could do against Doomfist that is going to kind of stop him for a second is absorbing his electricity. I don't think he's necessarily going to be able to absorb all of it because a lot of electricity doesn't make a component of how Doomfist can do what he does. And even if he does, Doomfist still brings the power in with what he does. And arguably, he would only be able to absorb a portion of it because the kinetic energy isn't on the same side of normal technology because electricity is a kinetic pulse of power. It's not just plain electricity. It brings in a punch. It doesn't actually go out of its way just to, like, shoot niggas. Because that, that was the case, then this nigga Doomfist would be fucking raiding at this point. Like, no racial. I'm just being dead ass, dog. But in general, when it comes to how he would be able to do it, getting close and dandy and taking electrical cords and getting on Doomfist. Now, Doomfist would give him pack and punch and probably disconnect him from him in a matter of seconds when he does it. But it's going to be a struggle, you feel me? And that's pretty much it for Dr. Victor. Uh, those are the feats that I came across and know about for the most part. But it's not, you know, super bad or anything. Okay, sorry, guys, looking over son. Okay, but that's it for Dr. Victor. I'm gonna talk about the other thing. I said all that right, and I could talk properly. That was good, cause that was a lot. There's a lot to commentate on. You feel me? Let me grab some more water. Okay. So how this fight with God for like is when they're fighting Nubani, Doomfist will be going in there for the kill. Cause if it's going on with all loud death match, Doomfist is right on him and Doomfist is all about the fight. He's very cocky in some scenarios and is always trying to get in the best of his opponents. But he isn't super cocky to the point where he's not gonna think before he does shit. But a lot of the times, Doomfist, he's over there trying to get into the fight, and it wraps basically this very Killer Instinct vibe to himself. But he isn't bad at what he does. He can't back up what he's doing type of vibe. But he definitely can back it up is what I'm saying. But what he cannot back most of the time is getting in the right kill in some series. He's not a failure at what he does because if he was, he wouldn't leave a mock on these people. And he wouldn't have really made a clear incentive goal. But when it comes to the situations that he has to fight in... He's very diverse in the power that he brings, you feel me? And when this situation comes to Dr. Victor, he doesn't really have a much I feel like that would really bring a full fighting vibe to the situation. I'm like, he's able to fight, you feel me? But he's not going to actually be up there in the close range because he's not actually the strongest guy. He's strong, but Doomfish is way stronger with the gauntlet in general and also doom is able to break himself out of prison by himself without the gauntlet and just with his hands punching it one at a time for pretty much half of his sentence correct me if i'm wrong in prison like i don't know how long he was mainly in prison but i know that he was just already on the start of doing that and taking his time and calculating and presenting a more adjustable way to do it. Because arguably Doomfist couldn't have just went out on a riot. But he wanted to do it in a way that he didn't have to worry about spreading himself. And putting more lasting touch on what he was doing. But Doomfist went out his way to literally just punch his way out. And do what he needed to. And Doomfist has this caliber vibe that doesn't unpresent itself in the situation. Because, nigga, what the shit, you feel me? And Dr. Victor has never been seen, from what I know, in the classic series to be on any par level of that. Now, he's able to hang with Doomfist for a while, I feel like. But when Doomfist gets tired and starts getting up on him and present more of the martial arts feel instead of just this blockbuster hand to hand ballistic combat Victor's gonna be fucked but when Victor sees that he has a lot of technology on his body mainly in his components he'll be able to absorb half of the advancements on Doomfist as his body and then take more 
of his gauntlet's power. Now, I mean the power source kinetic energy, but Doomfist is still going to have some. When he sees that, Doomfist is going to stop it, but it's going to wear him out. Now, Victor, with this technology and others, is going to be very powerful. And when he's on Doomfist, Doomfist is going to see that he might not actually be able to do this. And I feel like Doomfist would do this. And I'm not saying Doomfist is a quitter and this a bitch. But Doomfist is always thinking ahead of somebody. Arguably, this dude wanted Winston to put him in prison. To set an example. And also for plot. But besides what I think. And I'm not saying it's bad writing, by the way. I feel like Doomfist would kind of stop fucking around. And at this point, would just actually... Fuck him up. Like, what I mean by that is, like, he would just stop playing. Basically, bounce off from a position, knock him back with the full force, and then with the lasting energy of his body, go up into the air. And this thing, you'll know, uh, Victor can fly. Correct me if I'm wrong. Actually, no, he can't fly. Well, depending on the technology, he actually can fly. But even if he does come, if Doomfist hits him with that full power source of the Meteor Strike, I believe Doomfist will kill him. Now it can go either way. If Dr. Victor keeps getting on Doomfist and absorbing his power and giving him this electricity e blast component of all the technology around him and the same power source of the punch that Doomfist brings, arguably, just with the more energy absorption type of vibe, like, he's bringing it off to him, and it's basically unrelentingly blasting him apart, you know, like, it's stabilizing his body to the point where he can keep sucking more and more, because that's how his electricity powers work, and how the technological scale and evisceration of the technology to make it better basically work as taking something and solidifying it to the same compound it says. And when he could do that, I believe Doomfist doesn't have a way, but if Doomfist does exactly what I'm thinking and plays a lot more smart to the point where he can't touch him and weighs him down with his technology and keeps fighting and bringing him punches and staying clean and oozy with it. <laughs> that sounded stupid, bro, but you get what I mean. And if he really wanted to end the fight right there, he arguably could just jump up in the air and destroy the entire platform of where they are on Nubani. And I don't know how big Nubani is as a full C and continent, but I believe fully that Doomfist, if he jumped up in the air and destroyed the entire course of platform and area of Victor, he would kill him. No cap. And so... In my opinion, Doomfist would kill Victor if he even tried to get close to him with the full power and might of the gauntlet, blasting his entire head apart and destroying him bits. In my opinion, Doomfist wins. Hope you guys enjoyed. I'll see you guys in the next one.